back with yet another video. Um, in the background here you'll see there's actually another amplifier which I'm trialling at the moment. Um, the place that I buy my gear from kind of downsizing quite a bit. They've been brought out by another company uh, a few years back and that company's more into, into home installation systems and set and yeah not so much retail side of things so they're kind of rescaled down which is a real shame because I've been shopping there for many years um, and they had this amplifier um, which is a Yarlin uh, it's a single ended 25 watt integrated amp class A and I'd had to listen to it quite a few years ago for my other one um, but wasn't had different tubes in it and, and the speakers that were, were, were nice but yeah it didn't, didn't do it for me but I knew they had this there they, they've never they've never actually sold it well not this this one um, and it may even be a slightly different version than the one I originally listened to but anyway I knew they had it and he said they were going to send it back and I said to him well <coughs> have a, I'll have a listen to it and you know do us a deal on it and they yeah they said that was cool so um, yeah it's, it's amazing um, I'm actually playing a CD at the moment this is this is a bit of um, John Zorn's Masada, live in Sevilla, 2000. Fantastic recording. Um, but I've spent quite a bit of time with the thing today and playing mostly vinyl, and it is outstanding. Um, little amp, and I'm going to get it for a really good price. But I just need to do a wee bit more of a comparison with my Doge AM, which is also a very, very good amp. Um, but it's a push pull amp as opposed to a single ended. Um, and I think this is just a little bit more detailed. Um, it's certainly a very stunning sound, especially for vinyl. Anyway, speaking of vinyl, which is why we're here, I've had several things come in the mail and also picked up a couple of things in town yesterday when I was picking up the amplifier. So I picked up a copy of this Archie Shep Mama Too Tight. Um, this is an Impulse reissue, Universal Music, Ooh, from 2009. A nice um, 180 gram vinyl sounds really good very clean very quiet piece of vinyl there is a couple of wee clicks on it and unfortunately it just seems to be the way of things nowadays um i haven't actually got through the whole thing yet it's actually a very challenging piece of music um very free yeah i'm still out to the jury's still out on how much i, I, I like this Picked it up fairly, fairly good price. It's brand new. It was sealed because you know, there's a guy down south in Dunedin who sells records on Trade Me. He's part of one of the uh, part of an online Facebook group, and yeah, I bought several albums off him in the past. Um, another one that he had, which I've been meaning to get my hands on for quite some time, is this Sonny Sherrick album, and this is his debut album from 1969, Black Woman. Um, that's his partner Linda that on the cover with him. She's doing a lot of vocalising on this album. This is outrageous album. It's absolutely outrageous. It's fantastic. Um, I, I was familiar with the first track, Black Woman. The rest of it I'm not familiar with until now. 
but the whole thing is really good. I mean, this is, I mean, it's classified as jazz, but some of it doesn't sound all that jazz to me. Um, it's pretty free form, it's pretty out there and outrageous, and um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So I'm really pleased to have it. This is actually a Four Men with Beards uh, reissue from 2012. No, actually says 2001 on here actually. So yeah, I'm not sure. I thought it was a bit later than that. So yeah, must be. Anyway, um, yeah, there's not actually many reissues of this, and originals are at 100 bucks on Discog. So um, this was about a third of that. And the last one I got from the, the seller down south was this one, again, another reissue. Uh, this is from 2012, originally released in 1979. This is German um, electronic, droney, experimental sort of music. It's quite cool. Uh, yeah, really interesting music, so that's quite cool. Pyra later. Um, the guy, is, this is a, a solo fella who, where is his name? He is Kurt, oh, I can't pronounce his last name, Kurt Dalek, Lucky, Dalek. And he was also, around about the same time, in a band, DAF. DAF, where are they? They've got a big long German name, but DAF is short, and I can't see it. Ah, Deutsch, Deutsch, Amerikaniskin Prudentia. Right, ah, absolutely useless at that, but DAF. Um, so he was in that band, and they are reasonably well known, although I don't have any of their music, but um, yeah, nice little acquisition. Now, in town yesterday, while I was picking up the amplifier, of course, I went into the record shop. Now, recently, I was just doing a very quick exploration of Ennio Morricone, Morricone um, who we all know is, a, is probably the world's premier film soundtrack um, music writer, and has scored untold hundreds of movies. I mean his discogs on discography his discography on discogs is like eleven 1 hundred listings. Um, I'm sure a lot of them are compilations. Anyway, I went and had a look in the soundtracks bin just out of curiosity and came across this one. There was only about three records of his in there which was really surprising. I mean there were some other guys whose names were familiar with to me which who's, who I can't quite remember now but they had quite a lot more in there but this is there was about three. But anyway this is um, once Upon a Time in the West, I actually have a copy of this movie somewhere on DVD. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a interesting interesting soundtrack. It's a little bit, yeah, it's, it's a quite different in places, so there's different types of music on it, but it's only 10 bucks, it's actually quite cheap, it's in pretty good nick. Um, now I'm going to keep an eye out for more of um, Morricone's stuff, because he's, he's a fantastic um, musician. Oh, composer, and although I'm, I, this is the first time I've had any of his music, I mean, I probably am quite familiar, of course I'm quite familiar with the stuff he did off um, the Eastwood movies, he did um, Fistful of Dollars and Good, Bad and the Ugly and those, those that trilogy that he did, which are, oh, I've got all of those. Anyway, so yeah, cool, cool to look out for that. And then also I picked up this one, which I've seen around a couple of times and hadn't managed to get my hands on for whatever reason and, and thought I really need to. Um, the Dudes, the Dudes are a New Zealand oh, what, five piece, one, two, three, four, yeah, they were five piece, um, yeah, they were sort of new wave, new wavy, so they were, they were around, around at the time or just after the punk thing, um, so this is a 1982 compilation EP of six tracks that all were pretty much um, New Zealand classics now, uh, where, you know, they, they charted um, with a lot of this stuff, and you hear these songs probably a lot on, on classic rock radio. Um, the dudes were, um, I don't know if they were led by him, but Dave Dobbin, who sings vocals, guitar, 
and keyboards. Um, but they all kind of do a bit of each. But, um, yeah, he, he went on to become uh, pretty massive in New Zealand. He's certainly a icon of New Zealand music and, and hugely well known. That this was his first band, and yeah, I, I don't, I don't particularly get into his later stuff. Although Dee Dee Smash, his second band, who were pretty, probably even more successful than the Dudes, um, they were pretty good. Had some pretty good early stuff, but later on, I didn't really get into it. And yeah. But um, now this is fantastic, and it's I played it. This is the first thing I played on that amplifier last night, and it's a stunning recording. Actually, it's, it sounds really good. It's 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 pop rock sort of thing, but it's quite minimal. It's not very really noisy. Um, this one here was in Penny Lane, the record shop, and I'd seen it there for a while. I actually didn't know what it was. Now, no. I'd seen this around for years, I mean, off and on. I, I, it's one of those records that you see in the bins that you don't really know what it is, and it's been around, it was released in 1980... I don't know, two, three... Maybe the mid-80s, there's no date on here at all. Maybe there's one on there. Oh, 1988, so a little bit later than I thought. Um, so I certainly seem to remember seeing this around in the shops, but anyway, I'd seen this in the bins for quite a while, and I didn't know what it was, and I was thinking it was probably some sort of country rock music or something, because I didn't look at it that closely. The name was familiar, but I had in my mind that it was something else. Anyway, someone posted a copy of this on a Facebook post, and um, turned out that it's actually a punk album from a punk band. And yeah, no, this is cool. So. The, the missus was in town, the wife was in town on Sunday and I said look can you pop into Penny Lane and see if they've still got a copy, this copy of it because I wouldn't mind getting my hands on it and it's not a bad album overall. And the last two, now I'm not sure if I've shown this one yet but these are in the mail, come in the mail, um, god did I show this, I, don't, I just can't remember, um, I've had so much stuff coming in. Ark of Ascent, this is their first album from ooh, 2011. Now they've got three albums out now. The latest one's out at the moment on CD and it will be coming out on vinyl so I will be getting my hands on it. These guys are pretty heavy. I uh, really like them. Uh, Craig Williamson is the man, at the, the leader of the band. Um, they're still around. Yeah, because like I said, they just put a new album out and they're actually doing some live gigs up north. I would love for them to come down and play here but you never know. Unfortunately, they probably wouldn't get a lot of people going to the gigs because they're not that well known. Um, their second album, which I have a copy of, has been sitting, they've got a copy at Penny Lane, it's been sitting in there for absolutely months and months and months, and no one obviously knows what it is because it's a really good album and I'm surprised it's still sitting in the bin. Um, so yeah, that one, and then the last one, which is quite related, is Mr. Mr. Craig Williamson's first band, or not his first band, but an earlier band, is this one, Daytura, and this album, All Is One, came out in 19... no, sorry, 2012, it was released on vinyl, but I think the actual recordings were done in 1997, and there's also, oh okay, there's even a song way back from way back in 1993, so Daytura are a very old band for this man, although he was in something else first. Um, I think he was in a sort of like a death metal band called Azazel, um, who don't really have any old vinyl out. I think they've got some cassettes and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty cool. This is again pretty heavy psych kind of stuff, some really heavy guitaring, pretty cool guitaring and stuff on it. Um, so this was the. Uh... Actually, they only had the two albums. They had to, yeah, this was their first album, or second, second, I can't remember. Um, got it through Bandcamp, still some available, but this has actually got a live album included. So on the Bandcamp it so it's sort of says it's only a single album, but they actually pressed it up as a double with the extra live concert. So, and there are some m matches on the tracks, but there are also some other tracks that uh, are not on the main album. But yeah, I like this, this is really good. I, I prefer... This one in Arc of Ascent uh, has more heavier bands. He's also in a band called Lamp of the Universe, whom I showed a piece of vinyl of really recently. Um, so he's got three bands. This one here doesn't really operate anymore. This is, um, although it releases from 2012, I mean, the, the music's from way back, as I said. So that's 
my haul for now. Um, I've got quite a few in the mail as usual. Um, there should have been some more here today and they haven't shown up yet so the courier hasn't managed to get them here. The, the guy that was sending them was a bit delayed for some reason. So that's me. I'm going to now enjoy my new um, amp. Well I haven't bought it yet but I'd say I'm going to.